Why was it so risky for you to make Star Wars Origins and why did you decide to bet on yourself? Oh, risky. Because um, I think on, on paper, well, there's a few things to it. Firstly, you know, when you say fan film, right, people, there are lots of connotations about fan films and not a lot of them are good, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, if you want to ask for a first hit of what you think a fan film is, you know, they're usually people dressed up, copying things they've seen from films, usually, especially Star Wars fan films. And this isn't a slight on other films, I'm just saying in general, like fan films in general are like, a little bit naff, quite low budget, a bit amateurish, you know, because, and, and, uh, but what I love about film films is that they're a playground for people to learn filmmaking is like to copy the things they've seen on the screen and figure out how they're made. Um, so I have a great respect for, for, for fan films, but I think why it's risky was, you know, uh, on paper I'd made hundreds and hundreds of commercials I've directed and freshly for like 15 years. I've like made five feature films. It's like, why is this guy making a fan film? Like, what, 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 what? Like, you know, and uh, and I know there was some sniggering. I know there were some people when like three plus years ago, four years ago now, um, people found, you know, industry, commercials kind of stuff. Um, were like, what's that guy's going to make a fan film? What's he going to do? Like dress up in the woods and do a lightsaber fight? Like, why is he doing that? He's such a nerd. But now though, seeing it, people go, oh, okay, I understand. All right, I, I see, I see. Because it could never have been that, right? Like, and that's why I had to bet on myself and do something like risky because, and, and I don't mean this in a really cocky way because you might hate the film and that's fine. Um, but it couldn't be anything other than great, right? And 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 that's and that's hard for me to say out loud because it's my work, and you, know, you can be very critical of it. But I'm very proud of the film. I'm very proud of what we did. What we did, um, and um, and and it and if it was just a bit naff, you know, if it was just like mm, it's not quite right. Like you're really setting yourself up to fail by making, firstly, a Star Wars film, secondly, a Star Wars film, and an Indiana Jones film, <laughs> and also on the on the budget that, you know, they probably had for catering for a day. Like, you know, there's a lot that can go wrong, okay? But it was betting on the idea, you know? It's like, when I wrote that script, um, when I was in the place of trying to find myself as a kind of a filmmaker again, um when I told people the idea of, um, I don't know whether they want to get the spoilers or not, <laughs> but um, the, the, the thing, the, key, the, the, the core idea of why I was going to make the film, why it is called Star Wars Origins, people were like, I want to see that film. That's a really cool idea. Oh yeah, what if this? And Oh, actually, if that happened, does that mean this? It just started to ask, open all these questions and, and people start to be kind of inspired by it and excited by the idea. And it was something very different. I did not want to make a film that felt like it was part of the Star Wars universe of like, this is what happens in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. And this is that bit of story. And we're going to cast someone that looks a bit like Luke Skywalker and cast someone that looks a little... Like, no, like, I, I, films do that and that's fine. But I, I couldn't do that because... It, professionally and also in terms of quality it's like if I was going to do that I'd need to hire Mark Hamill <laughs> like you know there'd be no there'd be no gray area um so we really had to do something different and also just as a writer filmmaker um uh if you know it, it, it's a self-financed you know production so it's um it's me and a producer who just, and I still don't know why, <laughs> but he, you know, believes in me as a filmmaker and believed in the idea. And obviously I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And he was like, let's do this. And without him, I couldn't have made the film half of all it is without him and his support, you know, and him kind of really getting stuck in. Um, and, uh, and, and that is, you know, this, that's a commercial company called Velvet Film. 
uh, who I've worked with for years, and Gary Cowan, the producer, I've known from very, very many, many years, and he's kind of seen me grow as a filmmaker and a director um, and uh, from my very early days, like 15 years ago. So there's a history there that um, I, I, I couldn't have made this film 15 years ago. Like I didn't have the, the capital, the weight, the experience, the anything to make this film, you know, back then. I feel like everything I've been doing has been building to making this, this film now, you know, um, and, um, and I think also the reason why I bet on myself was the reason, the reason why I wrote the film was because, you know, I was stuck in development hell and, and, you know, or projects weren't happening or, um, you know, it was becoming quite frustrating and, and, you know, and I was at a point in my life where I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be make, trying to make big film. Maybe I should just stick to commercials. Um, and, uh, and then I realized that if I was going to work for free, because <laughs> basically a lot of ind independent film development is, you know, then why not work for free on something I love? And I love Star Wars and I love Indiana Jones. I love action adventure. I love Lucas and Spielberg. And, and, it, was, and, it, and it was fun to write something in that world that, you know, eventually I fell in love with um, and suddenly had the bug of like, wait, is this the thing I'm missing? You know, is this the thing I need? You know, if I'm, what is going to break me through that glass ceiling of, you know, low budget indie film, you know, is like, you know, if I can make something that is ambitious and kind of audacious, kind of, you know, uh, crazy, um, like who mashes up stars in Indiana Jones in one film? Like it's a, it's a stupid idea, right? Like it, it, there's a hundred reasons why that shouldn't work, you know. But the fact we sort of found the gem of why it could work made it all worth it. And without that, I wouldn't have made the film because you're just making a fan film because you're a fan of these films. And actually, what I was trying to do is, you know, subvert the expectation of what a fan film is and and there's a power in that is, is uh, I mean, I watch so many fan films. I, I really enjoy them. and I love seeing filmmakers make amazing stuff with next to nothing, you know, and the ambition and the scale of, of things. And there's some massive fan films with like tens of millions of views on YouTube and all this stuff. So there's an audience there, there's a hunger there, you know, for it. Um, but the ones I really like are the ones that are different, like, um, one of the very early ones, like George Lucas in Love, which is, you know, uh, George Lucas at university, you know, coming up with the ideas of Star Wars based on the the people that he's at college with. It's great. It's really, and it's like a sweet rom-com, basically, but it's lovely. Um, and then, you know, the classic one being Troops, which is like Stormtroopers, but cops. Again, fan films make something that the studios would never make. You know, because that's the power you have as a filmmaker, you know, to do something different. If you try and do the same, you know, that there's a lot of baggage to that. There's a lot that could go wrong because if your sets aren't exactly the same and your cast isn't exactly the same and, you know, and the costume aren't exactly the same, then it always just comes across as a bit amateur, you know, which as a professional... If anyone watched the film and thought this looks amateurish, I would have undone a lot of, you know, a lot of um, my kind of professional <laughs> reputation, um, reputation, I think. So, but, um, so risky, but f just felt like the right thing to do. It felt like the only thing to do, really. It felt like the only thing at the time that I needed to maybe after being um, so hurt, can't think of a better word, by projects not happening and, and things happening out of my control. This is a way of me getting a little bit of control back, you know, and, uh, and investing in myself, you know, um, and, and my career to go like, look, guys, um, I know I say I want to be a Hollywood director, 
you know, and I want to make big commercial ideas. Well, this is what I can make on next to nothing, you know, gives a job, <laughs> basically. Um, uh, and um, that, you know, but also, I mean, that's makes it sound very strategic. And part of it is because it's a lot of money to spend on a whim, but also it's because I love these films and I love these stories and I love this style. Um, and I just loved the sheer ambition of what we were trying to do. Like people say, oh, write what you know or write within your means on the page. And they're like, oh, if you've got if you've got access to an empty house, then write a haunted film, you know, and stuff like I don't have access to the Sahara Desert or a Star Destroyer or, you know, or chase scenes like everything on that page uh, written was everything cost money. Like There was no way of doing it in your back garden, you know. Um, and uh, so I kind of enjoyed the crazy people, excuse me, I kind of enjoyed the, the crazy people that got together that were like, I'm with you, Phil, let's do this. You know, and uh, and you know, and everyone should be very proud of you know what they brought into it. Um, and I guess that's the power of fandom, isn't it? It's the power of um, being able to dabble in the wheelhouse of like Lucasfilm, you know, because I know like you know, Flipbook uh, Studio did all the visual effects. You know, their dream would to be do things in the Star Wars film. So to do that in this film to that quality is is scratching that itch for them. So there's a there's a power in that as fans. Um, that was very wonderful to see and embrace and kind of let loose, you know. Um, and um, yeah, so risky, yes, but um, hopefully will pay off maybe it's too early to tell <laughs> if you know a film is possibly overly ambitious or crazy why do it because that's where the fun lies isn't it you know um why make something that you know you know how why make something you know you know how to make like it's like you always want to be growing as a filmmaker so like being safe is boring you know and how do you like i genuinely wrote this film and the third act of the film having no clue how i was going to make it i mean because obviously i started writing it for fun like i didn't think i was going to make it so i just wrote it because like oh i'd love to see this in a film this is cool um and then you're suddenly getting to the practicality of like oh i actually have to make that thing and look anything is possible with the right team or with with the right budget right so you can watch the end of the film and i'm trying to be spoiler light and see that big big ending and go yeah you know because like if you had ilm or like a big studio budget then of course your imagination can run wild but the the risky thing is how do you make that on hardly anything like that's that's the crazy thing. Give me a huge budget. That's easy. <laughs> like the, the the hard thing is making things cheaply and make them look expensive. Like that's where the hard stuff is. That's what made it kind of risky to make. That's what made it scary in places because you're like, oh, this is a big idea. And if it, if it looks a bit naff, it's going to ruin the entire film. It took you three years to make a short film. Was it really worth it? 100%. Yeah. I mean, maybe... Yeah, and I mean, there are definitely ups and downs in those three years. Because, and the reason why it took three years was, you know, financially, it took a long time to, you know, save the money. And then also, um, uh, I had kids, <laughs> like, at the start of it that, um, you know, that delayed things as well. Uh, I mean, there was, and it just seems crazy to think about now, a time when we were, you know, my wife was pregnant and I was thinking, Maybe I should shoot this before they arrive. I'll just pop over to the desert and film this thing. And it's like, what a stupid idea. I'm glad that didn't, that, that didn't happen. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, you know, so there's a few stop starts, but the idea just stayed with me. And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted it. 
and the more um, both as a, a film that was out there for people to enjoy. Uh, like I had this little secret source that f partly I was worried that someone else might come up with it because I felt like if I can come up with this concept, maybe someone else can. Um, uh, but uh, and the other side, just professionally, I was like just enjoying being hungry again, you know, for something. I felt maybe having made so many features and so many commercials and not actually having the real opportunity to make something of this scale was like the idea of self-generating that, you know, and disappearing to my office and like pre-visiting my film and going, well, I think the Star Destroyer would be here and, oh, there's a rocket launcher and, oh, you know, and they're doing this big chase and there's sand dunes. Like, you know, it, it's just a fun thing to visualize and just to let my mind and imagination run wild. And, um, and the three years, I think, just made it better. I think it, uh, although the script didn't massively change from the first time I wrote it, really. Um, I might have tweaked things here or there, but it kind of, the core of it stayed the same. I think what, what time allowed was the detail, you know, was purely from a practical perspective, and you can probably see I'm surrounded by props, it's like, it took me a while to acquire certain special things that appeared in the film. And they're not, they're not things you just buy off a shelf. You know, the things I had to get on eBay and auction and like, all this stuff is all part of the fun as a geek and a collector, but also as, as a filmmaker. Um, and then just really spending the time to previous the film and then study Spielberg, you know, action sequences and that classic thing of turn the sound off and rewatch things and go back and just tweak something, you know, give it that time. And it was tweaking, but it is all in that detail, I think, that came across. And then obviously I got to shooting it and then crap hit the fan and a lot of that prep went out the window anyway and I had to just <laughs> go with the flow. Um, that's just the... Um, it felt like, you know, life imitating art, imitating life kind of thing in terms of like all the problems George Lucas had shooting in the desert. I was seeing like, hang on, I've read all this somewhere. <laughs> uh, it's happening to me. I'm just I'm just waiting for the big storm to, to take my set away, which didn't happen. But uh, everything else pretty much did. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the three years was well worth it because I... And I don't say often, but I'm very proud of the film. I kind of, I enjoy it as a fan. And I think what I really enjoy more than anything else I've made is that, is that immediate connection with the audience. You know, it's like YouTube and, and being online. You know, as I'm having this conversation, my phone is dinging with comments from people. And that's part frustrating, part, part rewarding, because um, the majority of people have been very lovely. Um, and, and it's reading comments uh, from people that said like, I saw Star Wars with my dad in 77 and I watched this film and it kind of brought back the memories of like watching the original Star Wars and like, and that gives me, like, now that gives me goosebumps. I'm like, wow, how do you like, that's like the biggest accolade you could ever give it, you know, to give someone this 20 minutes, you know, and move them in that way and emotionally affect them in that way and then get and know and have that immediate connection, that response through a comment is, is very heartwarming and very and makes it all worth it. You know, it's kind of like I'm actually connecting with people. And as filmmakers, that's what we want to do, right? There's, there's nothing worse than making a film and people go, eh, you know, like it's, I'd rather people hate it. At least there's a reaction, you know? Um, luckily they don't. But, um, but it, it, it's, it's, it's very lovely to know that fans of all ages have found something in the film and, and are enjoying all that detail that took three years to kind of put together. So, yeah. Very well worth it.